The Pistons had spent almost a decade climbing up the NBA ladder. But in back-to-back -back years, their seasons had ended in brutal ways. They'd open the 1988-89 season with a lot of people picking the bad boys to take the final step forward, playing in a brand new arena, the Palace in Auburn Hills. But halfway through the year, they didn't look like title contenders at all. We were trying to win a championship, and at that time, we were six games behind Cleveland, and we were struggling. It was supposed to be the bad boys against the world, but the problem was inside, at the team's core. Dantley didn't like the fact that Rodman was taking away his minutes. We had this emerging star, Dennis Rodman, and Chuck wanted him on the floor in the fourth quarter because he stopped people. Stanley is on the bench, no longer the big cheese as he was in Utah, and he's had to adjust here in Detroit. This is a guy that was the leading scorer in the NBA. It wasn't sitting well with him. I think minutes and shots were something that was concerning to him. So he didn't call more plays yesterday like he'd done the previous five games. Maybe because Isaiah got on the road. Coach would always call their plays. And then when I would look at him, you know, give him that look. It was about time for me to get the ball. That was the look. We were playing up in Boston on a Sunday afternoon. Rodman gets instructions from Chuck Daly. Chuck went to take Dan Lee out of the game, and he wouldn't come out of the game. And Rodman needed to come out of the game. Chuck said something to Dan Lee. Dantley walked over to him and started yelling at him. It was the worst verbal fight I've ever seen in the NBA. It was so intense and so angry at one another that I felt like turning away. After the game, we flew back to Detroit, and Chuck met with Dantley behind closed doors. We heard them yelling for about a half hour. Coach Daly came to me. And he said, Jack, we're breaking up. We're not the team we were. Jack asked me, are we all right as a team? And I said, no, we're struggling. This is a spin that I don't think we're going to come out of. You have to close ranks. It's like a spring. Every year, the spring comes tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And eventually, it's going to explode. We had a meeting, and uh, Isaiah's getting on every player, saying what they need to do. I say, ho, 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 what about you? What you have to do? He wanted to be his team, and I wouldn't go along with it. It's going to be Isaiah's team. It wasn't going to be Adrian's team. And everybody knew that. I mean, everybody in the world knew that. We're at the palace. It was after a practice. And uh, I get the finger wag like this from AD. Do you know what's wrong around here? I'm like, no, nah, so I thought everything was cool. He said, he pointed over there, and he pointed right at Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah didn't like me, and I didn't like him. And he went up to the management and said, hey, let's get rid of AD. That's what happened. No, never, never. Never did, what? Never did Isaiah come to me and say, OK, we got to do this or do that. When we made the Dantley trade, I Isaiah was not even a part of it. Adrian Dantley was gone, but the guy they brought in didn't exactly come with a spotless reputation either. Oh, yeah. A reputation that had been following him since his very first day in the NBA with the Dallas Mavericks. I know the whole thing that people always bring up is the rap about the bad attitude. What yeah. are you going to say to people about that? Well, I just would like to ask people in Dallas, just judge me by what they see, don't, you know, don't judge me by what anyone said. Mark Aguirre had been the one player drafted ahead of Isaiah Thomas in 1981. He was a three-time All-Star with the Mavs, but he also had his problems with teammates. Mark didn't want to be here. It wasn't anything like it was a trade where he wanted to stay and he was thinking about uh, behaving himself and coming around. He just didn't want to be here and uh, made life around here a little bit miserable for us. Wow, we made this kind of trade in the middle of a season going for a championship. I was a little worried. Once that trade was made, uh, I think a lot of people said, you know what, they're not going to win the title this year. And there was a lot of anger in the city. 
the papers are going crazy, Jim. Why would they upset the chemistry of the team and bring a possible bad guy to a championship team? All this is going on in the press, and my wife and I were stopped at a red light. And there's two guys that pull up, and they recognize me. And they go, and that's how they felt about Adrian's tray. But there was one thing that made Mark Aguirre a lot different than Dantley. He'd grown up on the west side of Chicago, right next to Isaiah Thomas, his best friend. I wasn't one of his boys. That's all that was. It ain't had nothing to do with basketball or billing. I'm better than AD, period. Player to player, ain't no comparison. Team chemistry was the reason the Pistons had put themselves in a hole. So Isaiah set up a meeting to give his old friend a chance to meet the guys. I said, hey, look, you're not going to come in here and screw this thing up. We have a very good situation. You got to play defense. We don't need all that offense. You got to, this is how we play. You know, Mark, I've never been a fan of you, but Isaiah vouches for you. So here are the rules, and here's how we do business. OK, you're pissed and all of that. Man, look, throw the balls out. Let's do what we got to do. That's all I'm here for, winning the title. That's it. record in the league.